How are you going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dom, this is Bear Dog, and let's get into this lovely vehicle that we've got behind us, which is a Nissan Patrol that we are building a tray back on. So a little bit of an introduction if you've been following the channel you'll know this car came to us from Ireland it's a guy who has purchased the canopy off of second hand the canopy is going on the back of this car it came to us with a tray back on we're going to remove the tray from this vehicle and put our own on as you can see behind me it's already on but we're going to get to that for those of you who don't know what a tray back is I was fortunate enough to live in Australia for a number of years and they are a really popular vehicle out there. They're becoming more popular in this country. We have been building trays as a company for over seven years. I personally have been building trays on vehicles for longer than that. I built my first tray back probably 11, 12 years ago and what I would actually class as a tray back, not a tubular frame, so that is a flat utility bedded vehicle. The first vehicle I built as a genuine tray back was my classic Range Rover that had a steel tray on originally. There's a lot of things that I learned from that, how to do things, where I could make things lighter, where I needed to make things heavier. Working in fabrication, manufacturing and building trays for many years, you learn things as you go along. And then 10 years down the line, this is 10 years of tray building experience. You can see behind me, the tray is actually nicely coming together. So let's take a look at how we got to this point. Gonna make a bit of a series of this one, showing you the build of a tray back. So this car, as said, has come to us from Ireland with this lovely tray. Yeah, we're gonna do some K2 magic on it. Underneath the bonnet, here we go, 4.2. And look at that big whirly boy there. Yeah, she sounds fit. I thought it sounded a bit fit. Sounds spicy. Nice. What a weapon. It would make a good trailer. These are removable, as is the front bar. So this section here actually comes out. I'm going to leave the lights on the back as well, so I'll just cut the ends of them because we're going to wire in our own lights. And then there's a bit of a frame underneath you would have to drop it onto an existing trailer probably. I mean, this here need, would need to be removed. There is a bit of a frame, so we're gonna cut that off and that'll all stay intact when the rear body, I'm gonna call it, is removed. Even these lovely Fent tractor mud guards, they're going with it. That's the whole lot. Right, we're gonna get this ripped off now anyway. This is the weapon of choice for removing the tray. Oh yeah, we're gonna rip through that. Not too sure what's gone on there. Two bits of box section. A few slugs on here, lovely. So I think we'd better remove that first. That's on there. It's a big bit of box section. So first things first, remove all these mounts, remove them mounts and start from scratch.
like that. So you can see the mounting brackets now in place and then the frame that holds the canopy and then all the aluminium box sections cut here. There's another bit kicking around. Oh no, that's all of it there for the for the lower tray. So we're just ju we're just jumping on that tomorrow. Yeah, so basically where the wheel arch goes on there, we've got eight inches of upward travel. We cut the the frame like what's on mine, so the, the mud guard sits into it, which is what them strips are for. And the width of the cab, I mean, it is, we've pushed this in as far as we can, but that's the little bit that'll be sat out there. But it'll tie back in because as the box comes down here, it'll tie back into the body. But we've we've got like, yeah, my fingers width, it's like 90 mil sticking out. But yeah, yet again, because of the width of the axles, we can't really tuck it in. And that's the main hoop there. So the short bulkhead up to, up to this line, well, up to that line there, I think it's a little bit above that. So that'll be nicely full. I'll put some holes in there to allow the air to, to travel through when the canopy's not on but it is a little bit above the top of this cab. But we'll, we'll get a bit more done and we'll get some stuff on it because the thing that we can do to lower it down is these brackets here, we can slide that down a little bit. So it might be, but one thing I don't want is I don't want the wheel arches to start hitting the mud guards because that, that is going to be a problem. And I, I feel the height is about right now. So, but we'll get some more stuff together and then we can make a decision. One of the things that we weren't happy with was the ends of the chassis. So there was a, a great big hole in the end of the chassis. So we've cut that down and that meant that this bar could go back, sit really nice with nothing sticking out and then we cap the ends off. Where are you going? Where you gone, Squish, hey? <laughs> One of the things that we do is we cut the aluminium frame so the mud guard sits into it. The reason we do that, it breaks up the mundane line of just a flat, boring piece of aluminium at the side. It gives it a nice bit of character. The other thing as well that it does, it means that we can sit the tray ever so slightly lower because we've got a little bit more clearance on our wheel arch. All of our mud guards are the same profile, so the angles stay exactly the same. They're all CNC cut. What we do, if we're running a smaller tyre, so that's a 35, the distance from the left to the right, that would actually get ever so slightly shorter. The guard angle at the front and the guard angle at the back stays exactly the same. The other thing that we do is the width of the mud guard. So if you were running a 12 inch tire or a 10 inch tire, that width obviously as well is the only other thing we would change. However, as I'm saying, the profile of the mud guards is identical, which also means that all of our boxes where they join onto the mud guards, front and rear, are the same. So they're all designed in CNC, drawn up, and they're identical. That'll be the next bit that we'll get to. And I've got this dog looking at me once in attention, haven't I? Hey, you're always round, always round. After a bit of a loving, go 
Punkt, ja. Okay, let's have a look around. The last bit that you saw getting done was this piece, which is the box that holds the rear drawer. Now, we don't have the drawer runners yet. They are on the way. So before we go fitting that piece in, we'll wait for the drawer runners. We have a test fold here. This is for the bulkhead. So this piece actually faces forward. We've got our dimensions correct as to how we want it to be. We're happy with that. We then, we're going to do a drawing, add some holes in the CNC cutter, cut it on the CNC cutter, and then that'll get folded and stitched into place. We have the front bar headboard cut, which is there. That's then going to go around the top of that frame, get tacked on. These are the rear lights, or some of the rear lights. These are all LED, totally waterproof. Oddly enough, these are an Australian import, as are these. This is a steady, that's what we use for our reverse lights. So the next job is going to be rear light panels, the storage drawer holder in the back. Then we'll start to look to put the handles on. What are you doing? This car's come to us, somebody else has done the cab chop. Bear in mind that... The brackets that are on the chassis, we've had to make them completely. This isn't originally designed to be a pickup. Had we been working with a Hilux, Navara, whatever it may have been, the brackets on the chassis are there to hold a body. So because this is originally a full-bodied vehicle and it's had a cab conversion, there were no mounting brackets on the chassis to hold the lower frame that then holds the tray. We don't mount the aluminium trays directly to the chassis. The reason for that is the chassis flexes, it then tries to flex the aluminium frames and it cracks the aluminium frames. So we make a frame that holds the aluminium tray to the chassis and then that's all rubber mounted. We do not mount direct to the chassis. We're gonna then start making the boxes for the two front and rear sections. Now, I'll just quickly show you how we do the fuel filler. So the fuel filler now, on our old tray style bodies, you can actually see the fuel filler. Where what we do now is we hide the fuel filler behind the lid. So that's how we do the fuel filler now. But we'll show you that as we go along on the next one. That's going to be the next bit that we're going to be doing. And then we'll drag down... The canopy from up there will get that sat into place make sure we're happy where it's going to sit couple of measurements yeah that's the next bit that we're going to get done two years of non-running trying to get the oil light to go out so we we just got the stop solenoid on so it won't fire up <laughs> okay well that's it for this week i hope you've enjoyed the tray build a little bit of a sneak peek there at what's happened with the discovery could be running you have to tune in and see next thing as i've said is going to be rear lights we're going to get the drawer in the back we're going to start on the boxes if there's some more details that you want me to go into with the tray leave some comments down below let me know and I'll look to do that. I hope you've liked this video. If you've liked this video, hit the like button to let us know. Subscribe. That way, when the next video comes out, there'll be a little notification that lets you know the next video on the tray back build is out. It's a really horrible, dreary day, isn't it? On the discovery, the next thing is I need to do the air intake from the turbo to the air filter. I need to do the boost pipe from the turbo to the intercooler. The rest of the pipe work's done, the things are bolted in place. Fire that thing up 
and get it down the road. When the car's up to that point, there's still a lot of work left to do, but at that point, what I'm gonna do is start using it. In the coming months on the channel, I've got a few things in mind. One of them is I'm gonna set out a series of challenges. Now, I'm gonna set down the ground numbers for the challenges. I'm not sure what the challenges are gonna be yet. I'd be keen to hear what you think the challenges should be. My idea is to invite you, the viewers, along with me on a series of challenges. What we're gonna do is partake in these series of challenges and then we're gonna have a leaderboard to see where you stack up against other vehicles. Just loosely off the top of my head, I'm thinking there's gotta be a naught to 60 or a naught to whatever speed in a certain distance. I feel that's a good one that people are gonna to wanna to see. I think braking distance could be a good one. I'm thinking off-road vehicle to start with, but since we do things with motorbikes, do I bring a challenge on for motorbikes? Because we do things with cars, do I bring a thing on for cars? Yeah, not too sure. First things first, we're gonna work with four wheel drives. We're gonna get the car finished, do the groundwork, set the preliminary numbers for the challenges, and then you guys come along and show us what you can do. If that's something you'd like to get on board with, leave some comments down below, show me your vehicles. What I do want is something that's really unique. So part of the thing is gonna be, we're gonna invite you along to do a walk around tour of your vehicle and show us everything on your vehicle that has been modified, is different, improved, and just generally made better or unique to you. Really looking forward to that one. Can't wait to hear your feedback and we're gonna see you on the next episode. We just finished videoing and look at this. What are you doing on the hatch? <laughs> That's Gazzy Jeff. What are you doing, eh? Are we gonna get a smile out of you? No, not today. <laughs> You're